You're watching EASD TV, welcome back. For the very first time, climate change is on the agenda here at EASD 2022. And I've got two people who have been giving a symposium about that. So let me get you to introduce yourselves. Lutz, let's start with you. So my name is Lutz Heinemann. I'm interested in diabetes technology from a number of different angles. So I'm also, and this is what we are talking about now, I'm interested in the downside of using a number of different products for diabetes therapy that means waste, plastic waste. And Fiona? I'm Fiona Adshead. I chair the Sustainable Healthcare Coalition and I'm passionate about the connections between environment and health and particularly how we measure impact so that we can use that to design services differently and reduce the harm that they can do unwittingly to our own health through the environment. Now we know, let's say first of all, that we know that people living with diabetes are more vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. So that's one side of the equation. Um, let's start with you, Lutz. Tell me about the impact of technologies, because what we've seen is an increasing number of devices, none of which are recycled, and they, they seem to appear to, with alarming regularity. So what we have seen in the last 10, 20, 30 years is a much more widespread of use of diabetes technology for measuring glucose, might it be blood glucose meters or CGM systems, and for administration of insulin. So in the former times we had syringes only, and now we have pens, we have insulin pumps, we have patch pumps, and now come to the extreme in a positive sense to AID systems, meaning systems which automatically dose insulin. So, and with, these tech, with this technology, the different ones, patients can now have a very good glucose control. Not only the glucose control is improved, but also their whole lifestyle is improved. They can have a better sleep and so on. So there's a lot of positive developments supported by diabetes technology, positive side. Negative side, if you change the glucose sensor of a CGM system or the infusion set of an insulin pump, suddenly in front of you on the table, you have a package, you have a surrounding package, you have a leaflet, you have this and that, and suddenly we have a little pile of garbage in front of you. So, and, the, and then for the question, the, for the patients, the question is what to do with it. Patients are used to separate, at least in Germany, to separate the garbage, putting plastic there, putting paper there, and the rest in the regular waste. However, with medical waste, suddenly... They get concerned. Yes. Because some of these things, I suppose, technically ought to go into sharp spins. Absolutely. And they don't know what to do with it. and. And this is a terrible question to ask, and you, I don't know whether you'd know the answer, but what happens to the sharps waste? Ideally, you would have boxes in which you collect the sharps. In many airports nowadays, you have such boxes for sharp waste. But then what happens to that sharps waste that's been collected? Ideally, it's collected on its own, and then uh, it's uh, burnt. That's a way how to, to you safely handle it. Um, but this is something which is very differently handled in the US, in Europe. I don't know about the UK, probably Fiona knows more about it in the UK than I do. But Sharp's infectious uh, things are really a concern. So that's a, a, an actually huge pile of waste in itself, isn't it? The, 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 the Sharp's and the, all the bits and pieces that come from the technology. Well, that, that's true. And I think if you look at, for example, there's a pilot at the moment looking at recycling um, injection pens, not just for diabetes, but for other conditions. And the estimate um, from Nova Nordisk, who's running the pilot together with others, is that there's about 400 tonnes of plastic just from these pens each year. So that's a huge that's number. It's sort of something like 23 million 
depends. So once you scale that up just to a national level, and obviously when you think about Europe, it's clearly a lot bigger. Um, the importance of this is coming now to the fore because the OECD produced within the last couple of years um, a paper basically talking about the need to reduce medical waste. So our awareness is there. And part of what we need to do is to think practically within hospitals, how do we do this and how can we do it through pharmacies? Um, the scheme I mentioned is run out of pharmacies so that patients can bring their pens back and then they essentially then get actually take back to Denmark to be repurposed and they're turned into things like lights and chairs and other things which is good but overall in the healthcare system we need to think much more about how we reuse recycle and also reduce the amount of packaging we use and actually rethink the the items themselves because this is not sustainable it really isn't sustainable at all. Uh, and yeah. somehow it's always been, hasn't it, that medicine has somehow crept under the climate change radar, that somehow it must be doing more good than bad, so therefore we shouldn't worry. And we've all seen the extraordinary plastic waste that we've all generated during COVID, doing um, testing at home. Yeah. Millions of tonnes. Yeah. Millions of tonnes. So uh, absolutely. Take us on, Fiona. There's, there's, plastic, there's, there's waste. That's clearly one area of concern. But what about others? Well, I mean, as you suggest, um, we know that overall, globally, about 4.5% of overall carbon emissions for the whole world are related to the healthcare system. So, unfortunately, although none of us intend it in terms of how we practice, we actually do harm to our planet and through that to our health. And if we look at it, you're right, we need to really transform our health service. In the UK, um, the uh, National Health Service there has committed to become net zero by 2045. But underneath that, it really means that we need to transform not only how we deliver care, but also how we buy products and supplies because um, about 10 years ago the NHS did some calculations and worked out that about two-thirds of its environmental impact is through its supply chains not just medicines but also um, you know, many, many goods that it buys. So it's a critical part. So at the heart of this is the need to not only measure impact but to work in partnership. And there has been a, a kind of almost a, a current a running through health services that says that disposable is best because otherwise we risk infection. But actually when you really do the science, there's often not the risk of infection that people think. And in some ways it allows people to be careless about infection risk because they think somehow yeah. that if they've thrown away something then it's, it's okay. Yeah. That, that, so that, 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 what I think is impressive is if you think about waste, it's a quite complex topic. So, for example, we have a tendency to blame the industry. On the other hand, the industry has to fulfill a number of regulations and obligations and so on. There are a number of different aspects the industry has to take care of. And if they want to make a change and do it now, today, until it has an impact because developing new products, change production lines and so on, is something which takes years. It's nothing which you can do from one day to the other. But like Fiona has said, we are used to a certain behavior and we thought we have to have all these packages and so on. But if we rethink about it carefully, then I think there is a, a good portion of it where it can reduce the waste. Let me elaborate a little bit about it. We, that means the Diabetes Technology Society in the US, and a member of it, we have published a green declaration, Green Diabetes Technology, where we looked at all different groups, patients, physicians, manufacturer, and so on, and told them, please have a look at this and try to reduce your waste by 20%, 30%, whatever, in order that we have real targets the reason for saying it is the high risk with such presentations, such talk is everybody said, oh, good that we have talked about it and nothing changed. Yeah, action plans are very important. Fiona, take us on a bit in the kind of work that you're doing. I mean, I know that being well controlled 
person living with diabetes is greener, if you like, than being a poorly controlled person with diabetes because you're making more frequent visits to hospital. Yeah, so, so what we did as um, the Sustainable Healthcare Coalition with our partners did was that um, a few years back we actually looked at a typical care pathway. Of course we know that there isn't one, but you can begin to think about things like travelling to see your doctor, an emergency visit, a hospital stay, and then you can attribute um, carbon, environmental impact to each of those, if you like, building blocks of care. We then um, used economic data to model um, really what the difference was between a, a, a hypothetical patient who was controlled or poorly controlled. And even if you allow for the fact that the well-controlled patient will receive many more medicines because they're taking them, they're you know, doing all the things that they should do, actually the number of emissions per year is about 7% less. And if you then add that up across all the patients, for example, in the UK or in Europe or at any geographic area, it, beco it becomes yes. huge. Yeah. So for an average patient, um, there is a lot of care if you have um, diabetes. And so it would be that you would um, travel, say, the equivalent in a car of about 600 kilometres, more than you would on average. But if you're poorly controlled, it adds another 230 kilometres. So that man small but actually it all adds up and we were using um, generalizations what we hope to do and we've done for example in detail for renal care for people who are having intensive um, hemodialysis is actually then to be able to get much more accurate in how we measure why do we do this not for the sake of measurement but really to show where the big impact could be so it's around visiting your doctor foot care all the things that we know you'd want to avoid as a patient because who wants to be ill who needs to have extra care but also as clinicians and I think it really um, plays to a deeper truth which is that what we found in all the case studies that we've done is things that improve health outcomes for patients reduce cost as we all know and also reduce environmental impact so, so there's a triple benefit th to, to, be, to be gained. I'm, I'm going to finish, if I may, with asking you to uh, each to give me one action point that you would like to have diabetologists take up. Because as you say, we need action, not just, that was a nice talk. So, Lutz, what would you... <laughs> uh, i come back to the point in a second, but what I would like to strengthen is that the patients are also driving this yes. development. One point, and the other that also the politicians are driving this change by changing the rules across Europe for plastic waste and so on. So now you ask me about one specific point. There's one. I don't know if you ever read the instructions for use for a new iPhone or phone or device or so. I never read the instructions. <laughs> 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 but until now, to my understanding, still today, the instructions for use have to be with a given device due to law. And sometimes you have a, a little device and the booklet for the, with the instruction for use in, I don't know, 10 different languages. That's the first thing you throw away. Luckily, you throw it away into paper waste. And, and anyway, it's, it's done in league with spectacle manufacturers because it's all written in such small print that nobody can ever read it. Yes, and you have 200 pages and you wonder why in the hell the patient has not carefully read it. There's no physician who has the time to read it or nurse or so. There's a, a law, and I think we have then to change the law in order to uh, avoid the, the, this waste. Patients nowadays, what they're doing, they watch YouTube videos. Yeah? Yes. It's much easier to understand and to, yeah. to get it. So I think this is one example where I believe it can make a change. Yes. Okay. How about you, Fiona? Well, I think my one call to action would be for clinicians to work with organisations like us to actually go into depth of the impact that their care has, because it's only when we really measure the different elements and get that more accurate way of understanding that we can lead to change. I agree entirely about patients and enabling them to make the choice. And I think in terms of reducing waste, absolutely digital information would be a step forward. Finally, I would say that we're doing some 
some work at the moment that's very new looking at the impact of clinical trials. Again, breaking it down into building blocks. I'd like to see all the researchers who are here at the conference to really begin to think about how they conduct their trials and whether they really need to do some of the expensive travel or other things. Again, we should be looking at environmental impact in everything we do. And we're hoping to design a tool to enable researchers to reduce their impact um, and improve not only outcomes, but their impact on the planet as well. Thank you both so much. This is such an important area. It's awful, I think, that this has only come onto the agenda so very recently. Uh, we have to do something about it. We have to be in coalition with people living with diabetes because they are so, so uh, concerned about the state of uh, climate that they really want to drive this change. They can be your greatest allies. So do catch uh, this symposium. Uh, you can watch it on EASD uh, website, of course. It's terrific. See you soon.